Puppy classes have been going on for a long, long time, and they're a good thing. But over the years, I've seen good thing turn into bad thing. And what I want to do today for a little bit is talk to you about the good and the bad and the ugly. Okay, here's, here's a typical puppy class. There's a puppy owner and a puppy instructor and a puppy, and everybody's laughing and having a good time. And the puppy's learning to go through a little shoot, and it's great. These are the things that I think are particularly uh, troublesome. I do a lot of traveling. I talk to a lot of clubs and, and groups, and I find that often a training club or a kennel club or the local pet shop will put their lowest skilled person on duty for the puppy class. And that could be because we don't have giant 90 pound dogs coming in, gnashing their teeth out of control. We just have little fluffy puppies bouncing around. But I think the most experienced person should be doing the puppy class. Picking up the puppy. I tend to do this with chickens too. Pick up the puppy, put him down either on the floor, on a bench, on a table. If he starts doing this thing, we don't put him down. We just hold him there and let him flail around. And he wants to get down, I guess. And we wait until he's still. And when he's still for about three seconds, we'll let him down. Okay, because what happens? This puppy next week is going to be a pound heavier, and next week he's going to be heavier yet, and the puppy that you can control, then in two weeks, you're going to drop him, and that's not good. So from the beginning, we want to teach the puppy that when it's time to be released, you're not going to be released unless you're calm. And that's a pretty important thing. Another thing that you can teach puppies is about being on surfaces, especially up high surfaces. You can actually, and I don't do this only with certain puppies, I wouldn't do it with a puppy that's showing fear, but if a puppy is being a wild man and he's finally calm, I'll say, look, look at this is why you don't really want to be too wild. Look, ooh, see, you can fall off of there. And I'll just let him lower a foot so he gets that feeling of, oh, hmm, you know, Oh yeah, so they get the idea of it. I don't do that with a shy puppy, I do that with a crazy puppy. And I don't say, look at what happens. I just, you know, <laughs> just, just, just let them get that feeling a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just see if he's gonna go with me. He's not gonna go with me. So, you know, what's new puppy? What are you thinking, huh? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Look at you, aren't you great? Look at you. And then nothing. Another thing that you can do is, okay, I'm the owner and Faith is the instructor. So would you come up here and hold the puppy? You're the instructor. Just kind of hang on to the leash. Okay, bye-bye and I'm the owner, and see if he won't come. You want to come on over here? I'm not going to say come. I'm not going to say his name. I'm just going to say, I'm going this way. Aren't you a good dog? Look at you. Yay. All right, so it's not a come. It's not a, um, a name, but it's just the idea of mom's gone that way. The door's that way. This is somebody I'm not real sure of. Hmm. And I'm not specifically frightening the dog. I'm just setting up the environment to see if the dog... And the dog might say, I'm going with mom and go around. That's okay. So what do we do at that point? Do something else. Go on to the next exercise. That dog doesn't have to do that. That dog found out that he can be pretty darn close to this piece of paper and it really didn't get him.